Again, my name is Chang Q, a PhD, a PhD student in Tromsø, affiliated by UIT Machine Learning Group and SFI Visual Intelligence. The title of the talk today is Marine Vision, when visual intelligence meet marine science. But today, but today I would like to focus more on the fisheries. So uh, yeah, just keep it in mind. And first of all, I'm very honored to give a presentation of my recent works. And uh, before I start my presentation, I have to admit that this work cannot be done without help from SFI Visual Intelligence Partners, Norwegian Computing Center, Norsk Regional Central, and Institute of Marine Research, Havforskningen Institute. Okay, so yeah, this talk has uh, three sections. First, I would like to introduce acoustic target classification and actor world and, and uh, challenges of the current method. And afterward, deep semi supplied segmentation method will be followed. Yeah, first, uh, acoustic target classification. So uh, this term has been used in the field of marine science and fisheries. So uh, it might be a new for computer visioners, but the idea is quite straightforward. So classify patterns in the eco sound data. So, this term can be interpreted as a semantic segmentation or object detection. Uh, sorry, is there any questions or there's some sound? Uh, Robert here, I think it was uh, uh, just a mistake, so just carry on. I think that microphone is now muted. Go ahead. Okay, okay thank you. Uh, yes. So yeah. yeah, I will talk about the figure in the left briefly. So uh, this figure in the left shows how we collect the echo sound data. So uh, imagine there is a boat on the surface or on the, on the, on the ocean and it's sailing to designated direction in constant speed. Just uh, simply, uh, we can just set it in that way. And this echo sound on the boat send a transmit acoustic wave down to the uh, seabed or down to the bottom, and the wave will be backscattered, backscattered if it hits a school or fish or something else. And the backscattered wave is collected by the microphone or echo sounder. Yeah. Okay. And the sailing is often called uh, acoustic survey. And each survey has its own target species. So we have, so uh, we want to see a specific fishes through the survey, through a single survey, I would say. So most of acoustic target classification studies aim to classify the target species against the rest of species and of course the background. And this survey is often performed as a longitudinal study. So we can see how the target species changes over time, for example, annually or every six months and so on. Yes, uh, this slide shows a short term goal of the acoustic target classification researches. And actually, I really like this slide and I borrowed this slide from uh, Olaf's presentation that is given in February through our visual intelligence seminar. So here, oh, yes. do you see a red lead uh, point that I'm taking? Robert here, uh, no, I cannot see it. Okay, sorry, then, um, yeah, then I should use uh, this mount, mouse pointer. Do you see mouse pointer? Okay, never mind. I, I will just. I'm blind or not, but I couldn't see it. Mm, okay, so yeah, maybe then uh, this is only. I, I can see it, but it's only my side. Okay, then I will try to speak out. <laughs> yes, so uh, so uh, from acoustic surveys, we collect the data, echo sound data, and what we do here is acoustic classification to provide uh, stock. Uh, to, pro to provide statistics for stock assessment. And based on the statistics, the authority set the fishing quotas and in the end for sustainable fish, for sustainable fisheries. 
Uh, actually, the setting the fishing quota is very critical issue these days. And a few weeks ago, I was interviewed by a magazine called Fiskeri Bladet slash Tech Fisk regarding our recent publication. And afterward, I received an email from a Danish company called Aquamine on the same day when the interview was released. And the in this company, Aquamine is works for fisheries management in context of policy, fishing quota, and decarbonization of the fishing boat, and so on. And the update from the company was quite surprising me, since the most of fishing quota control in Denmark still is manually made, made by analysts who is looking at the surveillance camera quite a long time. So for control, the, the fishing vessels have a few surveillance camera here and there on the boss on the vessel, and based on the information recorded in the video, such as number of fish, fish species, and size, the analyst mm, yeah, control the fishing quotas or decide the fishing quota for the same year. And when I heard of this, I, I was I assured that this acoustic target classification has a high potential for innovation in fisheries since this method acoustic target classification method enables to estimate the target fish abundance without taking them out of the ocean. And please let me be, let me speak more ambitious and a bit more brave way. So I found this self-driving vessel project, which is currently ongoing by Kongsbar Maritime. And please imagine for a few seconds what will happen next if the self-driving solution applied to fisheries with acoustic target classification technologies. Yeah, so yeah, as you can uh, imagine, we probably locate in the starting line of the big change in the fishery industry. Yes, uh, let's go back to acoustic target classification. So uh, when we collect the data using multiple frequency channels, we will get the eco standard as shown as in the figure. So uh, there is a four rows of eco standard data, uh, A to A, B, C, and D. And uh, A shows the eco standard data collected in the 18 kilohertz channel. Yeah, you will see the number in the uh, bottom right side. And B in 38, C 120 kilohertz, and D and 200 kilohertz. But you can find the same pattern in the same Okay, not the same pattern. You can find the pattern in the same location over the whole frequency channels. And what we want to do is to classify that. Uh, yes, uh, the one of the most current, one of the most common method. So current method is uh, called frequency response. So uh, marine acoustic researchers have been investigating this. Uh, acoustic response for many years and they uh, they make some criteria or they just uh, analyze uh, the frequency response with respect to the marine organisms so for example whale it has a very very strong target strength throughout the uh, whole frequency channels while the Fish with thin bladder has a much lower than the whale, but a, a very unique response in a very low frequency region. So uh, this response is is a characteristics of the target species. But as you expect, these approaches cannot guarantee the consistent classification result due to the dynamically varying underwater environment. And then another method is trawl sampling. So uh, this method provides more consistent result compared to frequency response, but it's an expensive method in time and cost because we cannot trawl all the fishes to check the species. And at some point, it can threaten the endanger, endangered species. So uh, there's also some challenges. And in practice, we use a post-processing software or system called Large Scale Survey System. And this uh, this system or so 
processing software support uh, data pre-processing, including denoising and normalization. Also, it supports acoustic feature library to assist segmentation. But the actual segmentation or acoustic target classification is manually performed. It's a still manual and heuristic process. And so we need a full automated system. So yeah, let me summarize the challenges. Uh, so the current method require human operators with domain expertise, and also it still depend on manual and heuristic process, which is expensive and time consuming, and also vulnerable to human error. And for some method, it may threaten the endangered fish species. So yeah, to tackle those challenges, we focus on deep learning based method. And because deep learning can provide fully automated segmentation, and also it can be scalable to wider band echo sound data with an increased number of echo sound channels. Yeah, I have to mention that to the best of my knowledge, Olaf's work is one of the earliest deep learning based segmentation work in acoustic target classification. So uh, yeah, he already gave a nice talk in February this year through Visual Intelligence Seminar. And this, uh, this talk is still available in our YouTube channel. So you can, uh, you can drop by uh, this YouTube channel and check if you missed it. And he, he leveraged the unit architecture and achieved rope segmentation performance. And especially means more to us since his work is a result of a good collaboration within the partners of SFI Visual Intelligence. Based on his work, there are many different projects ongoing for now. For example, an evaluation pipeline for deep learning based model is now being implemented in Bergen. And also another project is going on in Oslo to improve the segmentation performance by ensembling the uh, eco standard data. Yeah, in my opinion, both work are, have a very good implication for orchestral target acoustic target classification. And it'd be nice if you can host them in the seminar and listen to their project in the next in the future. Uh, yeah, from now I will talk more about my project. So I like this line of works and I want to contribute to this. So my plan is to make this segmentation model more smarter. So I decided to tackle one of the generic supervised learning problem, which is too much dependency on the annotated data. It means that uh, even if we do sailing and collect the eco data, it is, it is useless for supervised learning models unless the expert operator annotate all the data manually. So we want to reduce this dependency on the annotated data we propose a novel deep learning algorithm that significantly reduces the dependency on the annotated data, for example, reducing 80 or 90% of, uh, of the use of annotations, but still achieve the comparable performance with uh, fully annotated models. So and it's, it is called semi supervised deep learning. And so far, our work. The algorithm is accepted by the prestigious Marine Science Journal yeah, a couple of months ago. So uh, deep semi-supervised segmentation. So we apply our semi-supervised algorithm to cement uh, segmentation task using the same CNN architecture of Olaf's work, so unit architecture. But the difference is that we train the model using two objective functions in a single model. So the first one is a called a clustering objective, which is trained in the CNN unsupervised manner or self-supervised manner, but we use full training data set. And another one is called classification objective, but it's a, very, uh, it's a supervised method and it's very uh, familiar for us but it only utilizes uh, exploit only small part of training set. So yeah, I make this figure to give you some understanding about semi-supervised and self-supervised because I, even I was 
often confuse these two terms. So let's start with the uh, leftmost figure. So we have CNN in yellow color. There's the input and the annotation. Both the input and both input and annotation are training set. And we for to train the segmentation model, we uh, the training set in, hold both input data, which is synchrotron data, and its corresponding annotation. And when it comes to semi semi method, we have the same input, but um, made some of uh, annotation part is missing. So we are not able to use the information, but only a small part of uh, input or input data is annotated. But when it comes to self-supervised method, it's slightly different story. So uh, when we talk about self-supervised, it's a fully unsupervised method, but we somehow uh, generate some, let's say, I would call pseudo label or pseudo annotation. Uh, using the only internal information in the training input, so without any help of annotation. So yeah, this is the motivation figure of our method. So we have input in the leftmost, and in in the feature space, uh, it can be displayed as a point, and the each point represents a single pixel. And the gray point is in unnotated, but the colored with red, blue, or green are unnotated. And we first apply a clustering objective to cluster them in a certain structure without any help of annotation data, annotated data. And afterward, we are going to use uh, the annotated part to spread the uh, uh, label or on annotation within the cluster. So, and by repeating this uh, process, process uh, uh, alternatively, so between C and D, B and C, we are able to construct some decision boundary uh, where each uh, region, I would say, sub region, is consists of uh, many clusters with the same where the samples in the cluster has uh, uh, predict the same class. Yes. So uh, this is uh, our model. Yeah, this is a conventional unit architecture. And everything is the same except the uh, rightmost yellow box. So all our methods start from this uh, rightmost yellow box. So when, uh, let's zoom in the yellow box. So if the, let's have a look at in the box, the yellow box in the middle. So the feature representation uh, over 256 by 256 with the depth of 64 is somehow compressed using PCA and we perform some, we perform some clustering algorithm. We run, we, we cluster them using k-means. So now the uh, the purple color features are clustered. They create some some structure, and using this structure, we train, we update the model using cross entropy loss. But to align this uh, feature representation to the clustering pseudo label or clustering or yeah, clustering structure, we embed the uh, convolutional layer uh, with the one by one uh, at the end of this uh, unit architecture. So using this, uh, by appending them, we train, we update the uh, neural network. Afterward, we replace the uh, com com one to com two to utilize the uh, annotated data. So here, the C represent the number of number of classes, which is uh, three in this case. And this course, we also we use the same cross interpreters to update this whole model. And this ABC is repeated in a mini batch level. So 
we can construct the uh, we can we can train the model using uh, these two objective functions clustering objective and class, class classification objective so let me briefly uh, uh, summarize this clustering objective a little bit more it's a unsupervised method or self-supervised method and uh, we use k-min clustering on the feature representation at the second last layer to investigate the structure inside the training data. But note that we, the, our plan is to overcluster the representation by setting k as a larger number. So here we set k up to 512, and it's much larger than the number of classes, which is three for this task. Uh, this clustering structure become a pseudo labels. And after appending a single convolutional layer at the end of the network, we update this network in a self storage manner. Classification object, so yeah, classification objective is much more intuitive. So we just replace the last layer to train the model with a small number of annotated data. So from COM1 to COM2, and we update the model in a supervised manner using cross entropy loss. Yes, so the conclusion. So we propose a same spice segmentation method based on a deep clustering. And it the method leverages two objective functions in a single RNN. And this is end-to-end -end and mini batch chainable method. And also it's a generic. So we can apply to the other data. And I did not include in the presentation, but it works well for clustering the last data uh, with a little bit of a spice so weight weight uh, averaging averaging weight techniques uh, yes i'd like to show uh, a prediction result that we have so the first row shows the input data and the second row is the label data and so if you see a uh, soup sec Okay, so if you see the number of annotation ratio 0 0.25, it means we use only 25% of annotated data and the rest is unannotated. Here, subsec segmentation means that we only utilize, we only train the model using the 25% of the annotated data. And the result somehow, the result is a uh, whole red, which should be blue. It means that uh, using this uh, small part of data, somehow able to split the uh, fish or patterns from the background, but it fails to classify which uh, which color should be. It should be blue, but it failed to red. But ours, in, on the other hand, the, the, the last row shows pretty much good result and the most similar result. Uh, with the annotation ratio, with annotated data in the second law. So we are very happy to with the result, and this work will be uh, submitted uh, yeah, within a few weeks, hopefully. Yes, uh, this is my uh, this is my end of the presentation, and I'm very happy if I can receive some questions. Thank you very much.